Hello everybody, Loader for Life here, bringing you guys a brand new video. This video was actually requested by one of my Patreons, uh, Mr. Night Zone. Uh, <laughs> and this is a video that I'm kind of dreading because uh, it's going to be a long one. And you guys are going to be like dumbfounded because, so, Night Zone asked me to make a video uh, showcasing my deck collection. And good lord, those who know me, I have boxes and boxes and boxes full of decks. I I never get rid of a deck once I build it. I always at least keep the core and everything ready for it, just in case if I ever want to play it again. And usually speaking, whenever I get rid of a deck, I end up wanting to play it again. Like that happened that's that's happened to me so many times, it's not even funny. Uh, so once I build a deck, I pretty much always try to keep the core if possible. There's only a few exceptions. Uh, usually decks I know that are probably going to be hit real hard by the ban list or something. Uh, but in most cases, I keep a deck once I build it. And <laughs> I, uh, I, I've been actually thinking about doing this video for a while, but I, I keep pushing it off. Uh, even after Night Zone asked me to do it, because I, I just got so many of those videos going to drag on for so long, I can already tell. So uh, let's start this off, and firstly, I am going to start off with the decks that I currently have sleeved and am testing, or am getting ready for a deck profile, uh, of which I have a few of. Uh, I usually have between four to five, uh, now upwards of, let's see here, six uh, <laughs> sleeved decks at any time. Uh, usually one is tournament ready, the others I play uh, just with friends and stuff. Sometimes I'll take them to a tournament, but not often. So the first deck that I am testing right now is good old Pure Performer Pals. Uh, thanks to uh, Skulker Bat going to three and everything, uh, Pure Performer Pals have a lot of their more firepower and everything. Obviously also they got their newest lineup of stuff including good old Sky Magician, one of my favorite cards, uh, especially one of my favorite Performer Pals. Uh, this deck is not ready for a deck profile, I'm going to be completely honest, mostly due to the sheer fact that it is like 50 something cards. <laughs> I gotta cut it down to as close to 40 as possible and I'm currently working on that, seeing what works, what doesn't, and trying out different ratios and stuff. Uh, that being said though, I'm currently loving this deck. Uh, <laughs> then again, I kinda knew I always would. Uh, but with the new stuff and with everything back up to three, basically for pure performer pals, and the deck is really fun and I I've been having a lot of fun playing it. It's really, really awesome. Uh, don't know when the deck profile for that is going to be ready. I'm going to try and have it ready by the end of the month, but I can't guarantee that. Uh, next up, we got Zark. <laughs> this is actually my tournament deck, uh, Zark Magicians. Um, I, I, I can't say much more than that. I mean, you guys have seen the deck profile, both versions, before and after the ban list. I absolutely love this deck. I am so happy that it's back to that everything's back at full power, basically. I'm um, gonna be trying out some other builds of like magicians and performer powers and stuff, but this is like my main go-to thing because I freaking love Zark. It's an awesome boss monster and I love this deck in general. Uh, next up we got freaking uh, Spirals. This is another deck that is just not ready. I'm testing out various things and trying out some things. The big thing is the ratios and everything. Uh, I can't wait till it's done though because I really, really, really like this deck and it's just a lot of fun to play. Um, spirals are interesting and everything. Uh, my big issues with the deck right now is freaking... Uh, uh, just too many cards, and I gotta try and slim it down a bit. Uh, but hopefully, I'll be able to do that. Uh, then we got a, another personal favorite of mine at Sub Terrors. Uh, this is pure Sub Terrors. It is not ready for a deck profile. I'm testing out some things, trying out different things. I don't know if I even want to do a deck profile of pure Sub Terrors because the deck just does not really function that well as a deck itself. Uh, I wish it did because really honestly I feel like that every deck should be able to function by itself as an actual archetype But sub terrors don't really do that. You usually got to mix them with something like prediction uh, princess tarot tray or uh, Mixing them with like the zodiacs or and stuff like that Which I'm trying to avoid right now because <laughs> people really really hate zodiacs and I also sold my barrages so uh, really in all honesty uh, this deck, I love it a lot, but I'm I'm trying out various different ways to play it and make it work. Uh, my biggest issue with it is that Archer, their arguably best card other than uh, the new trap, uh, Final Battle, is just not very useful in sub-terrors, and it drives me nuts. 
Uh, here's a deck that is actually ready for a deck profile, and I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I do intend to do it sooner or later. And that is Sharks. I have waited so, so long for this deck to come out, and it is finally, finally out in TCG, and I fully intend on doing a deck profile of it. I, I even got everything all laid out. <laughs> the uh, There's actually a few cards missing because I had to put them in a different deck, uh, but once I get around to doing the deck profile, I'll be putting those back in, obviously, and I, I freaking love this deck. It's such a fun deck, and I can't believe it took, what, like two and a half years to get over here. Uh, it drives me nuts. And then, what's this? This is, ah, yeah. Okay, so then we got Predator Plants. Uh, they got Orphus Scorpio and Darling Cobra, and I've been testing out a new build of it. I uh, actually just got my third Orphus Scorpio the other day. Uh, finally gonna be able to play the deck at its full power and everything. Orphus Scorpio helps out so much. And this deck is just stupid once it goes off. The issue is getting it to go off. <laughs> but I still love it. Uh, Predator Plants is a fun deck, I love it. It's so awesome. Uh, I can't wait to do a deck profile on it once I get around to putting the third Orph of Scorpio in here and really doing a lot of deck testing. Uh, then I'll be certain to get the deck profile up and ready. And then we got this uh, next deck, and that is uh, Budget True King Dracos. Uh, True Dracos, True Kings, I don't know what to call this deck. It's like two archetypes that are supposed to be one archetype. Uh, the deck is the budget version. I mean, let's be honest, aside from Masterpiece and... Uh, crap, I forgot. Oh yeah, Dragonic Diagram. This deck is super cheap. Like everything in a deck is like five bucks or under, except for Dragonic Diagram and Masterpiece. Uh, I'm debating on if I want to do a build with and without Masterpiece maybe. Uh, I mean, there's not too much difference between the two different builds with and without Masterpiece. Uh, this is the build without Masterpiece. I don't have Masterpieces yet. I don't know when or if I intend on picking them up. They are like 20 bucks, but they're also slightly going down and stuff. So I'm gonna wait and see if they go down a bit after the uh, special edition comes out and has been out for a few days. I mean, it's already been out and uh, I'm just kind of waiting to see how everything goes for the prices on these new cards and everything. But yeah, this deck is like super, super cheap and easy to build. <laughs> Uh, and then, now then, that's it for like all the decks that are sleeved up. After this, it's all deck course. First up, we got uh, Dinos. <laughs> I did the, the deck profile for them a while ago. This is literally just a core and everything. I try to keep the extra deck and the main deck all together. Uh, I feel like there's some cards missing though. Um, oh yeah, just the staples and stuff. Um, fun deck, I love it, but I don't intend on playing it for a little bit. Maybe sooner or later, I don't know. Uh, and then, let's see here. Next up we got... Good old... Uh, Kaiju Gusto. I was actually toying around with that for a little bit. The issue is, is that the Kaijus just make it kind of inconsistent. <laughs> uh, but however, I I've been liking it. I don't know when or if I'm ever going to get around to doing a deck profile of it. I mean, right now I don't even have it sleeved. But it's a fun deck. Uh, Gustos in general. Uh, one of my favorite archetypes. Took me forever to get my hands on everything for Gustos. And actually, I have something really cool. Those who have seen my deck profile on Gustos will notice. I have a DT misprint uh, com. Uh, as you can see, she's got a bit of a paint splotch there uh, from when she was printed. Uh, I could have sworn I traded for her, but my friend says I pulled her out of the DT, which I don't remember. <laughs> I figured I'd remember that. Uh, then we got Speedroid Windwitch. Uh, I'm kind of hesitant to play this deck now that Terra Tops at one, and that really is what bugs me. I, I hate Terra Top being at one. I hate it when decks get hit because a meta deck is playing uh, one of their best cards, you know, like with Dragon Ravine for Dragon Rollers and stuff. Uh, I, I hate it when it happens, but I, I can't help it. And so now one of my favorite decks is just made uh, a lot worse. <laughs> and then, let's see here, we got, trying to make sure that everything is nice and separated. There we go. This one I'm actually probably going to sleeve up sooner, uh, pretty soon and try out. The issue is, is we're still missing uh, one of our better synchros, and that is good old Cardians. Cardians, I love Cardians, you guys notice, Cardians are awesome. Uh, and I just really, really wish we'd get the rest of the stuff. We're just missing the freaking level 6 synchro, and uh, that's about it. Sorry about the interruption, had to go and let my dog back in. Uh, so yeah, I like Guardians a lot. It's a lot of it's a lot of fun. Uh, the issue is the inconsistencies and stuff, and the, well, the Synchro helps out a lot. 
And then next up we got good old uh, Synchrons. I love this deck so much, but I, I I should really start playing it again because once links come out, it's deader than a door now, and it's one of those many many decks that gets killed by links. And then let's see here, we got a deck that I'm actually working on because I finally have almost everything for it and I've been trying to get all the pieces for it for like a year now and I'm finally like getting close. I think I have everything but I got to double check. And that's Konami. I've been wanting to build this deck forever. Uh, I'm pretty close to having everything. I'm pretty sure I have everything. The rest is back in my room somewhere. Uh, I know I for a fact I have Maku Mac and stuff. Uh, but he is in my number collection. Um, so yeah, I, I really, really freaking like Karamui. And I'm finally getting close to having the deck done. I'm so incredibly happy about that. <laughs> it took me way too long. Uh, then now then, let's see here. What do we got? Gotta make sure that I have everything all together. That's just random crap. Uh, and that's also more random crap. <laughs> Gotta dig through the stuff, uh, cause there's a lot of random crap in, in here. Um, here we go. Okay. Here we go. Okay, this is, yeah, this is what I thought. I'm pretty sure, yeah, okay, cool. And that means that this is just there. Yeah, this is another reason, cause honestly, as much as I try to keep my deck cores nice and tidy, sometimes they don't <laughs> get very tidy. Uh, so, this is uh, Invoked Gem Knight. I'm sure a lot of you guys may or may not remember it from a while ago. I freaking love this deck. Invoked help out, uh, helps out Gem Knight so, so much. Uh, it, it's such a fun deck. I love it. it. Sadly, it's another deck that gets hurt real hard by Lynx, and I'm probably going to play it again uh, before Lynx, kind of like as a last hurrah. I don't know. I freaking love the deck, though, and I... <laughs> I feel so mixed about links. <laughs> um, let's see here. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. So here's a bit of spirits. Uh, my old spirit build. A uh, bit of it is over in Chino Birds, and Chino Birds I have laying around somewhere. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I don't know where they are. Uh, well, actually, I, I know where they are, but like, I it's not with all my other cores. Um, but yeah, Shino Birds and Spirits, both fun decks, really like it. Always been a big fan of, of uh, Spirits in general. Uh, here is like one of the most disappointing decks ever. I tried so hard to get it to work, okay? But Jesus Christ, it just would not work. And for the record, I have the main uh, rank gate for this deck, but it's in a different deck. And that's freaking Cyphers, this deck. I mentioned it whenever I did my archetype analysis of them, and I think I'm missing some cards too. <laughs> uh, I, I tried so hard to get to work on YGO Pro, I tried so hard to get to work in general. This deck just does not want to work. Konami made this one of the most poorly designed archetypes ever. Uh, not only that, but also they give them stupid restrictions and just too little support. They need more rank 8s, they need more XCs in general, they could really do it for rank 4 or 2. This deck just needs so, so much more, and Konami just did not care at all, and it drives me up the wall. Next up, we got a personal favorite of mine, and probably going to be a big deck that I'm going to be playing a lot after Lynx come out, because it's just as unaffected by it. <laughs> and that is good old, uh, crap, I want to put the best card in front of the whole rest of everything else. A Black Luster Soldier. I freaking love this deck. It's ritual based, it can do a lot of damage. I can do so, so much. Uh, this card is randomly like $10 now. I mean, I know that's due to set rotation and stuff, but still. <laughs> this deck, it's one of my favorites. I love this archetype so much. Black Luster Soldier is such an awesome card. And so are all of his other variants. And once Lynx come out, this is definitely going to be one of my big decks I'm going to be playing after Lynx. Uh, I love it. <laughs> it's just awesome. I love it. I can't really say much more than that. Uh, I also have... I think I have a playset of Ultimate Rare uh, Super Soldiers. I can't remember, but they're in my Ultimate Rare collection if I do. Uh, here's another big deck that I'm going to be playing after Lynx. Uh, well, part of it. The rest is in a different tin. And that is Cubics. Cubics are awesome. That's just a small part of it. Again, I have the rest in a different tin. <laughs> uh, then we got Kaijus. 
Uh, pure Kaijus, you know, I freaking love Pure Kaijus. It's a fun deck. Uh, really obnoxious to play against and, pl and to play. Oh, there's the rest of Cubix. <laughs> uh, no, okay, not the rest, but almost. And that's just random. Hey, flipping table. I forgot I printed out that. <laughs> Uh, there's the rest of Gem Knights. Yeah, I also have like pure Gem Knights in here. But again, like certain decks are just mixed masked and everything. So yeah, good old pure Kaiju. Really awesome, fun to play. Then we got good old Cyber Angels. I actually need to revisit this and play it or play around with it with the new stuff. I haven't really done too much. I freaking love this card though. It's so much fun to play around with. Cyber Angels are another great deck after Lynx, and I can't wait to just really play it with like full power and when every other deck is like super weak. Then we got two random Destiny Hero cards. Uh, more Cyber Angels. Uh, I think now we get into some other stuff. <laughs> uh, I know I have TG somewhere. Then that's some random stuff. Uh, a bit of Nordics. I was going to try out a different build, so like some of my Nordic stuff is separate from my other Nordic stuff. And Jesus Christ, there was just a bunch of random crap. I really need to go and sort through this again. Uh, then we got Destiny Heroes. At least some of it. I don't. I actually probably going to put this in with the other Destiny Hero stuff. My Destiny Heroes, I actually keep in a. Uh, in my binder because they are almost max rarity and I love them too much and I don't want them to like get too dirty. Uh, that's more Destiny Hero stuff. And then here we go. So this is Ghost Trick or at least what I've got of it. I've been trying to rebuild this deck. I used to have it way back when it first came out and everything and it was so much fun to play. And then I traded it off to somebody and I regretted it ever since. Oh wait, no, now I remember. I sold off my other cards. I had a play set of Ultimate Rare other cards first said I got them when they were dirt cheap and then Burning Abyss came out and they skyrocketed and I needed money for other decks. So I sold my other cards and I ended up getting rid of the rest of my Ghost Trick stuff over time. And I regretted it ever since. I freaking love this deck. It's so much fun to play. I know like everyone's like, oh, it's gonna be dead after things come out. I, I don't really think so. I mean, links are definitely gonna be annoying for them, but like all you gotta do is play more back row and links are gone. <laughs> um, got a few alien cards. Aliens are nowhere near done. I, 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 and <laughs> I am missing a lot for them. Uh, this tin is almost empty though. Let's see here. More Destiny Hero stuff. Uh, more aliens. Let's put the Destiny Hero stuff over there. Hey, more cubics. <laughs> uh, let's see here. That goes over there. Oh yeah, I was thinking about trying out this stuff. Uh, hang on. Okay, cool. And yeah, that's more random stuff. Uh, this is the Felgrand deck. I was trying to build Felgrand, uh, but it, it just wasn't worth it too much. I have everything. I don't know where the heck my... I think the commons are somewhere else. I don't know why I don't have them with these guys, uh, but I gotta look around for that. Felgrand is an interesting deck and everything, but it just... It just doesn't work as well as the other decks out there, <laughs> which is a bit annoying, but oh well. Alrighty, let's go ahead and put these back in there. I'll be honest, I'm half tempted to like split this into multiple parts because this is just going to be such a long video. Uh, and I might have to cut it again because I think I forgot some tins and these cards are not wanting to go back in. Come on. And uh, I forgot to mention it, but like if you want to see deck profiles of all these decks, whether they be updated or uh, somewhat old or new or whatever, uh, ask down in the comments down below. I will, if I already have a deck profile and it's not like super old or something, I'll link you to the deck profile, to the deck profile of that deck. If not, I will be sure to try and get around to doing a deck profile of that. Alrighty, here we go. Next up we got Cyber Dragons. I think this is actually uh, kind of a bit weird because I was, yeah. <laughs> this is uh, from when I was trying out Cyber Dragon uh, ABC. 
Uh, Cyber Dragons are a lot of fun. I freaking love the deck. It's, it's just it has so many ways to OTK. Uh, it still drives me nuts how I have two of this version of Cyber Dragon, but I have one common and it just drives me nuts. Uh, Cyber Dragons are missing quite a bit, I feel like. They could really do with some more support. It's been a while since I've gotten more support, and the deck is just, it's still a lot of fun. It can just pull an OTK out of nowhere. <laughs> it can be really obnoxious for the opponent. Uh, still a really great deck, but I feel like that it could use a bit more. Then we got good old Buster Blader is next, if I can just find where he ends. There we go. Almost. There we go. Uh, Buster Blader, uh, sadly another deck that is going to be severely hindranced by Nanks, I feel like, because the deck is already hard enough to play, and it's like best thing to do is get out both the Synchro and the Fusion and just kind of sit on them and screw over your opponent. But the issue is, is that with the with uh, the the links and everything, you can't get out both unless you play a link first, and the deck already has a hard enough time making both of these. So, yeah, it's gonna be a harder deck to play. I mean, I feel like that some people, somebody out there is probably gonna be able to get it to work. I'm gonna try, but I can't guarantee anything. Uh, still, still a really fun deck to play when if uh, you're not counting links coming up. And then, okay, missing the bottom half of that deck. Gotta pick that up. There we go. Here's a fun one. Shiranui. I actually want to return to Shiranui because I don't have Solitaire and I have yet to play the deck with Solitaire. I really want to try out Shiranui with Solitaire, but uh, I, I just haven't gotten around to getting Solitaires. I know they're like five bucks, but I just haven't gotten around to it and I fully intend on doing it eventually. <laughs> um, the big thing is, is that like I just, oh yeah, and I don't think I have the level 10, do I? I can't remember what rarity he was. Um, yeah, I don't think I have any of the new support for this deck, and I can't even remember what set it came out And I might have some of it laying around, but the deck is still a lot of fun. It's uh, one of the better zombie-themed archetypes. Heck, I think it's, let's see, only, no, no, there's that and vampires. I forgot that vampires were zombies as well, but those are like the only two zombie-themed archetypes I can think of. <laughs> uh, anyways, so moving on. Next up, we got Magician Girls. Uh, I actually really want to return to this deck and give it another try. Uh, I freaking love it. It's such a fun archetype to play. Um, the reason why I want to return to it, though, is because Apprentice Solution Magician just came out, and she really does help out the deck. I just wish she counted as Dark Magician Girl while on Field or Engrave, uh, so that then she could really help out the deck because... Uh, where was she? Uh, the level 5 gives an attack boost. Yeah, her uh, Kiwi. She gives an attack boost to all of your uh, Dark Magician girls. For every Dark magi sorry, for every Magician girl, uh, you control her in your grave with a different name. So I really wish that <laughs> Princess Illusion Magician uh, would count as Dark Magician girl. Uh, the biggest issue right now preventing me from doing that with uh, a Princess Illusion Magician is, is that I only have one and she's kind of expensive even after she's gonna drop down a bit a friend of mine uh, should be getting two of them though and he said he'll probably let me borrow them because he doesn't really think he's gonna play anything with her in it so that's gonna be awesome I hope he does that <laughs> Uh, now, I know you guys saw some Crystal Beast stuff, but uh, this is only a tiny bit of my Crystal Beast stuff. The rest is with my Crystal Beast Metal Foes, which I know for a fact is in a different tin. That or it might even be in this tin, but somewhere else. And then we got the Yod Dinos, my original Dino deck. I still kind of want to play Ultimate Torino just for the hell of it. I freaking love this card, but Ultimate Conductor Torino is just a better version of these two guys combined. Um, yeah, there's no real reason to play the old Dino cards because the new Dino stuff is just infinitely better. Although this, uh, no, this card might be a uh, fun little tech card <laughs> if you want to be gimmicky. Uh, I also really like that card too. Uh, but yeah, that's the old Dino deck. I, I love it, but it, it just pales in comparison. Uh, didn't DC troll everybody whenever he opened up the old Dino deck and said that he was uh, and like put it as a title for him opening up the new one? I think it was him. I can't remember. I know somebody did it, though. <laughs> uh, now then, we got uh, Prediction Princess stuff. <laughs> I just put it here so I know where it is uh, for if I want to try out Prediction Princess uh, Subterra again. And we got Galaxies, or we Galaxy Photons, uh, to keep, them, keep track of them for whenever I do 
Pure Galaxy Photon again uh, after returning from uh, Blue Galaxy. Speaking of, I also dropped, uh, I put him here so I know where he is for Pure Blue Eyes. Uh, then we got Raid Raptors. You'll notice I don't have Force Strikes anymore because I sold my Force Strikes a while ago. I really do regret that because I freaking love the deck still. But after things come out, the deck is just not going to be as good. And. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how the deck is going to play after links. Uh, I, I, I follow a Raid Raptor focused uh, Facebook group and everybody's like, oh, you're going to have to play it like uh, Shun does in the anime and just focus on ranking up. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds awesome. Um, then we got uh, Chemical Beasts, uh, fun deck. Took me forever to get my hands on these. No one online had them and no one in my locals had these guys. And I finally managed to get them uh, thanks to a friend of mine who got a hold of them. Uh, Chemical Beasts are a lot of fun. I feel like that they're severely hindranced by uh, just the fact that they are freaking... <laughs> oh wow, random Destiny Hero. Uh, they're freaking Geminis, not only that, but also it, it just... The deck just lacks a lot of support. Out of Between it and uh, Crystrons, they got the sword end of the stick. They both came out at the same time and Crystrons got more support than them. Uh, later on down the line, which really sucks because Chemical Beast I feel like had a lot of potential, but then again, so does Crystron, so I don't know. Uh, then we got uh, Red Dragon Archfiend. I do have Scarlights, I just, they're in a different deck somewhere. Uh, always a fun deck to play. That, I think that's just all my tuners because <laughs> I mixed this with Dino Mist uh, last time I played it, and uh, I also tried mixing it with Cyber Dragon stuff, just stuff to make easy uh, level weights. Then we got Crystrons, fun deck to play. Just a fun deck in general. Uh, still don't know how I want to play it exactly. Uh, oh wow, some of my Raid Raptor stuff fell over onto this side. Okay, uh, let's see here. Wow, almost all my Raid Raptor stuff fell over to this side. Holy crap. Okay, uh, where my Raid Raptors over here go? Ah, don't start barking. No. Be quiet, girls. <laughs> My puppy started dog barking, so they're gonna start barking. Yay. Okay, there we go. Raid Raptors are where they are supposed to be. <laughs> uh, next up, we got good old Amorphages. This deck, I really wanted to work. I like Amorphages. I also tried to make some of the trap tricks because it was uh, interesting. Um, the issue of Amorphages is that it's just really hard to keep up the maintenance cost. Their skills are weird. Their level, well, their skills are perfectly fine, but their levels are what's weird and what really kills the deck. I mean, heck, some of their best monsters are like just you're unable to summon them uh, thanks to their skills. Like, seriously, this guy's level six. The highest skill in the deck is freaking uh, level, uh, what was it? Um, skill level like uh, five, and then the low skills are three, but yet they got level one, two, five, six monsters, and their boss monsters are level eight. You can't pendulum them, that, which is why you gotta play this, and then they gotta freaking, they gotta freaking make the next cost and all of them. And it's just really, really freaking obnoxious. Uh, and the worst thing is, is that you can't even use like other pendulum monsters as the scales, because the main thing that you wanna use are their pendulum effects. <laughs> uh, like for instance, while this guy, uh, Slough, while he's in the Pendulum scale, neither player can add cards from the deck to the hands except for Amorphage cards. Okay, that's cool. But, <laughs> uh, just really, really obnoxious. And then, like, uh, they all have, like, the same Pendulum, I mean, monster effect where, oh, hey, whenever they're Pendulum summoned or Foot summoned while they're out on the field afterwards, neither player can special summon monster stuff for Amorphages. Uh, which again is cool and I really like it and they also have a really scary boss monster in Amor Factor Pain or whatever he's called uh, but really in all honesty this deck just is so underwhelming and I really feel like that it was they did they they screwed it up on purpose because if they didn't the deck probably would have been a top tier deck because it was a stupid uh, and then we got the rest of my good old Nordics I haven't played Nordics in forever god I missed the deck uh, I will probably, 
I really want to play it again, uh, especially after things come out, because the deck gets a bit better, because the deck, because uh, the whole format gets slower uh, to an extent, not to like any like massive amount. Um, and Nordics are still one of my favorite decks. If I had to like put them on a list, that'd be number two with Destiny Heroes at the top, or Heroes in general at the top. Uh, I really want to return to it though. It's such a fun deck. Then we got Gradles, one of the most obnoxious decks ever made. I actually have not got to my hands on Gradle Juniors or the Counter Trap <laughs> yet. And then we got Arcana Force, uh, one of the most underwhelming archetypes ever with some really cool boss monsters. <laughs> I really, really like the Arcana Force EX monsters, the Light Roller and the Dark Roller, but they're really cool boss monsters in a terrible archetype. <laughs> and. Uh, I, I really want to build a deck around those guys, and I thought about doing a Pendulum deck around uh, the Arcana Force EX Rollers. The issue with that is, is that they specifically list that the monsters have to be sent to the graveyard. They aren't like Dogma and Plasma, where they can be just tributed. No, they gotta be sent to the graveyard, which means uh, it's just really, really, really obnoxious, and it makes making a deck around the EX Rollers infinitely harder than it really should be, but oh well. Um, <laughs> uh, God, it's annoying. I really want to build a deck around the EX rollers one day, though. Also, this needs to be a card. That's flipping the table. Just because it's it's just so hilarious, and I freaking love it. And let's be honest, who hasn't wanted to flip the table whenever their opponent just, like, completely and totally one sides him? Good Lord. I hate it whenever you grab a bunch of cards and you're trying to get them all to face the same way and they all just do not want to be up or down or sideways or anything and it's it gets annoying come on and there we go now oh, so i know where everything is put that in the middle so nothing gets all righty and then the last 10 uh I, I have at least one more box that i know of full of decks but this video has already gotten long enough, and <laughs> I, I I might go and grab that, and but I don't know. We'll see. Depends on how I feel. I'm not feeling well, to be honest. Uh, ah, dang it. No, stay. Okay. So, first up for the last ten, we have... Make sure where everything just kind of ends. Uh, yeah, there we go. Why is this upside down? That's annoying. Flip it over. There we go. Uh, Paleozoic. Paleozoic. Uh, specifically Paleozoic with the uh, Phanonite uh, trap monsters. It was a deck that I tried out. I had a lot of fun with it. It was before <laughs> I played it before Grass came out, and I wanted to try a build with Grass, but uh, yeah, Grass was a bit out of my league for money, and nobody ever had any, so I just kind of gave up on that. Uh, might do an updated version one day. I don't know. Then we got a personal favorite of mine, a Gishki. Gishki are one of the first uh, ritual focused decks and they are still one of the, I think that they're really good, honestly. They're really fun, uh, good, uh, tier two-ish, three-ish um, ritual focused deck. They have a crap ton of search power. Um, really, really fun deck. The issue is that they can, their ritual monsters, honestly, aside from like Gusterakin and this big guy, are a bit underwhelming and Gus Kraken's still at one because <laughs> of the annoying hand loop. Then we got a deck that honestly I can't wait to try out after links come out and that is uh, Steel Swarm. Steel Swarm are basically monarchs. <laughs> like they're literally monarchs but they're focused on uh, paying life points and focusing on bouncing back cards to hand or sending cards to graveyard. Uh, they also have their own version of Judgment Dragon which I don't play because he's just terrible. Uh, but this deck is overall really, really fun to play. It really could do with a bit of a bonus. Oh wow, I did have two pot of dualities. <laughs> um, the biggest issue with the deck, of course, is that they, compared to the Monarch, stair effects are just not as good, which really, really is just such a shame for a tribute focused deck. Not only that, but also, I, I really feel like that their monsters really should, they, they really should have had more monsters than just uh, Cell and Scout to really help with the tribute summoning aspect. I mean, yeah, Gatekeeper is nice, but you got to have them out on the field to get that extra normal summon. Uh, yeah, Caller is nice, but how often are you really going to get to tribute him? And yeah, Sting is nice, but he doesn't hit Pendulum or 
Uh, I believe, yeah, Pendulum or Exceeds or Now Thinks. And so Sting's not all that great <laughs> anymore. Uh, the deck is still interesting and a lot of fun. It just really could do a, f a few new cards. And then we get to another personal favorite of mine, Gimmick Puppets. I remember when I first picked up all the new stuff for Gimmick Puppets, it took me forever to get the stuff prior to it. And then the new stuff came out in the Premium Gold version and, and the Premium Gold set. And it would, I freaking love this deck. It was such a fun deck to play. Uh, it really could do with a bit more support. I can't really decide off the top of my head what they need. I think I did a blast from the past on them. So I don't know. Did I? Can't remember now. And then we get to another personal favorite. I'm going to be saying that a lot. And that is Elemental Heroes, uh, specifically the Retro Heroes. Uh, freaking holographic, uh, parallel rare, uh, thunder giant. Really should be in a card sleeve. And then we also have a bit of the Neo Spatians. Yeah, for some reason, I don't know why I have my uh, E Hero Fusions over here. <laughs> Not with my Elemental Hero deck. Uh, but yeah, I have my Neo Fusion, my Neo stuff over here. Um, if you're wondering where my Neo Fusions are, they are in a uh, in my collection binder. Uh, weird, I thought I had three Miracle Contact, but apparently I only have two. Uh, and that card recently spiked up in price due to it being a collector card and out of print, which is a bit annoying, but oh well. And we got Infernities. I freaking love Infernities. This deck is a lot of fun to play. Honestly, if I was going to build it now, the deck would literally not be any different from the build that I played before. Uh, it just works so well as a really good synchro spam deck, and I freaking love it. It's a lot of fun to play. Uh, and if you want to remember, my Void Ogres are there in other decks, which... Uh, includes my uh, Buster Blader deck. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, and then let's put that there and that there. Alrighty. So next up we got. I can sure I have them all in one spot. Heroics. Uh, I was actually thinking about returning to Heroics uh, here shortly. I freaking love this deck. It's a lot of fun to play. It can do a lot of funny little gimmicky stuff. Uh, it actually might be not too bad on their links because they're all Earth. And so you can make Mrs. Radiant and that helps out with just DOTKs because this deck is all about DOTKs. <laughs> uh, and just doing massive amounts of damage. I freaking love their boss monster, Excalibur. Uh, the other monsters in the deck are really fun too. And it's just is a really fun and interesting uh, rank four warrior focus deck that I really like a lot. Next up, we got my silent and power deck. I oh god, this deck is so much fun, but it, it's it just really could have been a lot better. Uh, actually, it was really it, it was really good with the uh, with Norden, but sadly Norden uh, it just got banned actually today. Today's the twelfth, and so this deck is lost a bit of its firepower but it's still a lot of fun to play you can do a lot of rank four spammy stuff and now uh, you got big boss monsters like uh <laughs> silent magician level eight and this freaking beast a third the empowered dragon sorry the evil empowering dragon uh just a lot of fun to play in general and of course silent Magi uh, silent swordsman level seven still a pain in the butt to get rid of uh getting uh, negating all their spell cards on the field well all spell cards on the field i should say he's not a spell card <laughs> Uh, then we got good old trains. I never actually did a deck profile of trains because it's because I never really got a good build of them running. I was trying out a bunch of different stuff. I really liked the deck. Uh, I did not want to go out of my way and get the Shadal stuff to do the Shadal build. Uh, but it's still a, it's a really fun deck. It's one of the few rank 10 focus decks and I, I really feel like I could do with a bit more support. Uh... Next up, we got a personal favorite of a lot of people, including myself, <laughs> and that is Blackwings, uh, guest starring Hot Red Dragon Arch Fane, because he's got over here. Uh, I freaking love Blackwings. I really, really like my build, the super aggro build, uh, that's like super, super fast and like just focus on like just going for game real fast and nuking your opponent's board with Rekiri. And good lord, I love to feel the ultimates. <laughs> Uh, this deck is a lot of fun to play. It's just really awesome. I've been trying out like other stuff with like King Synchro and stuff, uh, just for helping out with DOTKs and protecting myself in case if I just fall flat. Uh, 
deck is a lot of fun to play. I don't know what else to say about Black Wings. Everybody loves Black Wings. Uh, except for people who hate the fact that the deck keeps getting more support. And then we got the rest of the Retro Hero deck, because again, I don't know how all the fusions got moved over to my Neo stuff, but we got the rest of the Retro Heroes. Uh, I've been trying to bring it out. <laughs> kind of hard to get secrets of everybody in good condition, but oh well. Uh, I freaking love the deck. Somebody told me that there's a funny little OTK you can do with Mariner and Skydive Scorcher, which I kind of want to try out. Uh, this deck has been getting a lot of new support lately, and I actually really want to try out some of this new stuff. Like a uh, Fion and uh, Skydive Scorcher and crap, what was the other new card? Uh, God, Legacy of a Hero, that's what it's called. And then we got Power Rangers. I, I freaking love this deck. I am just so upset that this deck is so much harder to play under the new uh, format and everything. Uh, it's already kind of hard to play, but once these come out, it's going to be so much harder to play because you can't spam out all three XCs in one turn and then uh, use the field spell to go into Great Magnus. It's just not as going to be as good as it used to be, and it is another reason why I'm not looking forward to Link Format. I'm actually intending on making a video talking about uh, my thoughts on how I think that like Link Format, I don't think Konami really fully fought through with everything with things. I'm going to be completely and totally honest. I don't think that Konami uh, thought through fully about everything and how uh, Links are going to affect everything uh, once Links come out. But oh, well, I'll get to that in a future video, hopefully. Then we got Evolves. Uh, I don't know what to say about Evolves other than that they're a fun little dino deck. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to play. I kind of want to try mixing them with the new dinos and stuff. Uh, i actually been testing out uh, the new dinos and Drax, and I want to try out the new dinos with Evolves. Uh, should be a lot of fun. I like it a lot. This deck is... It's sad that its best play is still focused on a flip effect monster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're basically like dinos dinosaur versions of glad bees uh, then we got uh, melodious I haven't played melodious uh, melodious in forever I still love the deck and honestly I feel like it might still be a great deck for link format just because you typically only really go into one maybe two fusion monsters at a time if even that because you usually just stick with the uh, aria and uh, LG lock and everything uh, still a really fun deck to play and everything. Also, it's like one of the few decks that can actually use uh, Relay Soul. <laughs> uh, which is a funny card. And then we get to an old school personal favorite of mine. My first uh, tournament deck that I ever had uh, like five years ago. God, it feels forever. And that is Gladiator Beasts. Uh, Gladiator Beasts are still a lot of fun to play for me. I can't wait for the new stuff coming out in early July. I can't believe that we're actually going to get to play with the new stuff before uh, links come out because Editor is a stupid card. Adabante is an okay card. Noxus just helps out so much. And I just freaking love this deck. I can't wait for the new stuff. It's going to be so much fun, and I still want to bling it out. I'm just missing one more Ultra Test Tiger, which bothers me, and I would really like it to be Ultra First, like these two. Uh, but I, I still love this deck. I don't know how much it's, I don't know how well it's going to do during Link Format, but I don't know. Uh, it's still a fun deck for me. Then we got Crystal Beast with, I believe, Metal Foes over here. Should be. No, okay, just Crystal Beast. <laughs> I don't know where my Metal Foes stuff went. Uh, but yeah, Crystal Beast. I still love this deck. It's one of my favorite decks. I I really wish we could get the freaking... Uh, why is this not in a card save? That's a Tactical Evolution First Dead. <laughs> this is still one of my favorite decks. I can't believe we still don't have the freaking... Uh, Pendulum Monsters or the Quick Play Spell or the Continuous Trap. We... Uh, by the time we do get them, the deck is not going to be playable anymore due to links uh, with the new stuff. So I don't know what Konami is thinking. Uh, it, it's it's such a sad thing that a fan favorite archetype is hated so much by Konami for some reason. Then we got Evil Swarm. I, I'm kind of like hated because I like Evil Swarm so much, but oh well. Evil Swarm's a fun deck and goes in and out of like usability depending on the uh, format. Right now though. Yeah, it's not very great because you don't special see any like level five or higher monsters being special summoned too often. 
But either way, it's still a favorite deck, a fun favorite deck of mine. Uh, it's going to see even more like of a drop off of playability once links come out because links don't have levels and they just for some reason won't adapt the older cards for the newer game. Uh, that's it, guys. I have another box of car of decks I know of, but like I. This video has gone on for way too long, <laughs> and I'm tired. Uh, the other box, it has stuff like Fluffles. Uh, pretty sure my ABCs are in it too, or at least what's left of it since Boomer's borrowing most of it. Um, trying to remember what else is in there. Uh, Fluffles, and eh, maybe my Charmers. I, I haven't finished Charmers. I really want to finish Charmers. The deck is just not very good. <laughs> so guys, I'm going to leave it off with that. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great day. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And see you all later. Peace out. Hey, Legend for Life. Just wanted to give a quick shout out to my two Patreons so far. Uh, to my two wonderful, wonderful Patreons. Uh, Cambrock223 and Nightzone. You guys are incredibly, incredibly awesome. And it, it just, I, I can't express my thanks enough. <laughs> Thank you guys both. And I hope everybody has a great day. See y'all later. Peace out.